What is up guys? Welcome back for week two of the NPL Majors. This week we are taking on Abe Forth and his Newcastle Umbreon. Abe is some, somebody that I have faced off against uh, multiple times in the past. Uh, once in NPL Season 5 when I replaced Ray, and once again in the GBA D-League very recently back in October, I believe, either September or October. And um, I've actually beaten Abe twice, uh, and Abe was somebody that uh, I've watched, I've seen him play, I know that he has a lot of skill, a lot of knowledge with the game, so uh, he's not somebody to be slept on, uh, as Joel said about me most recently, so very flattered, but uh, same applies with Abe. And uh, looking at his team, he's got a, a few serious threats for me. You guys see the matchup on the right side, I actually have my team up for you uh, on the right as well this time around. Uh, the Mons in yellow are, of course, our Z-Mons and uh, the ones in blue are our Megas. So let's go over Abe's team. He has, of course, the Megalodios, Tapu Fini, Tyranitar, uh, Snorlax, Roserade, Thundee T, Bronzong, Hitmonlee, uh, Palisand, Yen Mega, and Typhlosion. So uh, looking at the matchup and after seeing a few mocks, uh, I noticed that there are uh, th there's a very big inconsistency with what comes against me. Uh, he can build a plethora of teams. Uh, there's one Mon in particular that I think will come, which is Dragon Dance Megalodios. That's something that I prepped for, uh, and that I knew was a possibility of coming, so uh, I definitely wanted to be able to check that. Tapu Fini was something else that I was pretty sure was going to come. Uh, Snorlax, uh, Thundee T, Bronzong, and Paolo Sand. Those were the six I had in mind. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, Bronzong, uh, I saw an offensive set used against me. Trick Room uh, Macho Brace was insanely strong against everything that I brought. So let's go over the team that I brought for Abe. The first Mon we have here is Dehuan, our, uh, our Amoongus making its return. I uh, did get a few kills last week. And um, I th actually, I think it only got the one on... Uh, it got the one on Terrakion, and it got the one on Greninja, I believe. Uh, yeah, it got two kills. So Dehuan is back this week. Black Sludge this time around. I want to get some Recovery Regenerator, of course. Uh, we have Sludge Bomb, Foul Play, Clear Smog, and uh, Stun Spore. So essentially what I'm trying to cover with this set... Uh, is Calm Mind Finny. Um, the Megalodio setting up in front of me uh, becomes near impossible because Stun Spore hits it through the electric terrain because it's off the ground uh, with its levitate ability. I'm also trying to cover Curse Lax with this set because uh, Curse Lax automatically becomes slower than me unless he's running a ridiculous amount of speed. Uh, and Belly Drum Lax also has to speed creep what I've sped crept. As you see, we have 24 speed down there. Uh, we're a Calm Nature with 80 uh, speed F and 152 defense. I believe I need this thing to be able to take a plus one Zen Headbutt from a uh, Megalodios, as well as a neutral Psychic uh, from Megalodi, so I was able to take both. Uh, and uh, this also ensures that I take minimal damage, of course, from things like uh, him on Lee, Palisand, uh, all of the Mons uh, on his team. He has a very big dark weakness uh, on his team. If you look, you see uh, Megalodios, Bronzong, Palisand, those three specifically. Dark and Ghost hit super effectively, uh, but that's a big part of the core that I think is going to come for me. So uh, that's the reason that I'm running Foul Play. Uh, another reason is, of course, Belly Drum Lax, which, uh, again, has to speed creep me uh, by quite a bit. Uh, if he wants to run a lot of bulk, then he won't be able to do that, but he just has to invest, like, a little bit more speed than I do, and he outspeeds me. We, we tie in uh, in speed brackets at uh, base speed of 30, so that's Amoongus. There's not much to say about it. It's just really reliable in this matchup. Moving on, uh, I decided to uh, create a setup sweeper set in Como. So, as you can see here, we have Roselli Berry, Bulletproof, uh, Shadow Claw, Poison Jab, Drain Punch, and um, Dragon Dance. So, uh, Bulletproof makes me immune to uh, Sludge Bomb from Roserade. I, ha I have to watch out for Dazzling Gleam. That's always a problem. Uh, it makes me immune to Shadow Ball from Pal Palisand, which is its best stab to hit me. Uh, Earth Power, obviously, uh, is a little bit stronger, uh, but p the, um, the Shadow Ball is always an option, so I can always switch into that if I know that's coming out. You see my coverage here. We're running Shadow Claw, Poison Jab, Drain Punch, and Dragon Dance. Uh, my speed is so that at plus one, I outspeed max speed uh, Jolly or Timid Megalodios. Uh, I'm running uh, a Boosting Nature and Attack with 80 Spadef and 64 HP. So this is to be able to take Finny's Moon Blast a little bit better. I believe from full, I can even take a crit with my Roselli Berry. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I can take a crit from no investment on Finny, uh, as well as a max special attack Finny. Specs is a whole other issue, but uh, this this thing can also switch in pretty well to Thundee, as long as it's not carrying Hidden Power Flying. Uh, Psychic is, is more likely, though, because I do have the Amoongus as well. Uh, it just hits more neutrally across 
across my team. Uh, Hidden Power Flying is, of course, resisted by Mega Aerodactyl, so I, I think that Psychic would come uh, if he brings Thundee. So uh, the idea with this set is that once I have a Dragon Dance or two up, uh, I win. Uh, I can two-hit KO the Finny, uh, Max Defense Finny, with Poison Jab as long as Rocks are up uh, once I'm at plus one. So I'm also covering uh, Kebiaveri. Um, with that same logic in mind that I can still two-hit KO him. Uh, so, I, I know that Poison Jab is never an Oko. It's, it's never, never, never an Oko on Finny unless it's taking a ridiculous amount of damage during the game. Uh, so that's why I have a couple of other things to, to damage it throughout the game, as you guys are going to see. Uh, but uh, Drain Punch plus Shadow Claw, as I mentioned, he's he's got a lot of ghost weaknesses, the things that would normally check Como. Uh, Bronzong can normally take a hit and fire back a Psychic. Palisand can normally eat hits, uh, as well as uh, Megalodios. Uh, well, well, it can't take the Dragon Stab, but I want the Shadow Claw to be able to hit the other three. And then Drain Punch just hits his team really, really well across. Uh, Poison Jab hits whatever Drain Punch doesn't, so uh, i.e. the Thundy T, the Roserade. Uh, and uh, and as well as the Yen Mega, so that's uh, that's going well, pretty straightforward. I'm uh, gonna try to sweep with this thing. Next up, we have Captain Crunch, our our Tapu Koko, coming with a Shuka Berry this week. Uh, I'm running 112 HP, 252 attack with Wild Charge, Raybird, and U-Turn. I'm fully physical uh, with a um, a speed that's meant to outspeed Scarf Tar. So uh, 365, make sure that I can outspeed Scarf Tar, uh, as well as Max Speed Thunny, Max Speed Latios, all of those guys. And uh, we got U-Turn for the Latios. We got uh, Brave Bird is specifically for the Roserade because Roserade is typically an okay check to uh, Coco. Another reason I'm running Physical is specifically for the Lax. Uh, if it is a more offensive variant, if it doesn't have a way to recover its health, then I'm going to be good against it. Um, by firing off wild charges in electric terrain. It's also going to do the most amount of damage to uh, to Hitmonlee, to Bronzong, uh, and there's not really anything outside of Grass Knot that I could have run for the Palisand, and while it does two hit KO with the correct investment, uh, I didn't feel like running Grass Knot for just specifically one Mon. Uh, Titar doesn't take as much as I would like, neither does Lax, even though they're really heavy, so I decided to go with this set instead. Uh, I think it really put it pressures in the Roserade or the Lax specifically, so I can go for a Wild Charge or Brave Bird, uh, whichever one comes in, so that's uh, that's Coco. The reason I'm shook a berry uh, was for Earthquake him on Lee because it's more likely that he'll run Earthquake uh, than Poison Jab on his Lee. Um, the music's getting a little loud, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to turn it down on OBS uh, so that you guys... Or I'll, I'll turn it down in post-editing, worst case. But anyway, the Shooka Berry's there specifically for the him on Lee if it does get up the... Uh, uh, an unburden through uh, through terrain or through another method. So that's uh, that's Coco for you. Moving on, we have Shiapoof, the uh, Durant coming this week. Darkinium Z, uh, Hustle with Crunch, Ironhead Sub, and Hone Claws. So if you look at his team, Ironhead plus Crunch. Once I have a, a Z Hone Claws up, uh, destroys everything. So if I can get behind a Sub and just uh, Sub uh, and Hone Claws uh, or Z Hone Claws rather, I I pretty much win at that point. Uh, as long as I've identified the Scarfer, uh, my speed is enough for the Thundee. I'll never outspeed the Latios regardless of what I do, and I'm sure he's going to speed creep Durant uh, if he's smart, so um, I didn't decide to speed creep that, so that's always an obstacle is the, the Mega Latios, but the Mega Lati has to be carrying Hidden Power Fire, and if I identify that it's a physical set, there's a chance that it's not running Hidden Power Fire, so I can always set up with this thing. Uh, Sub is there because one of the methods that he has to stop this is by clicking Protect with Yan Mega. Uh, and I wanted to be able to sub in that thing's face as it goes for protect, and then just iron headed on the following turn. It can break my sub for all I care, uh, and then I'm just going to knock it out with uh, with a plus two iron head. I also have the option of going for a Z crunch at any single moment, uh, and that's also really really strong against this team if everything's taken damage, uh, especially if the Finny doesn't come. Then he pretty much has no resist to it whatsoever uh, outside of Hitmonlee, which doesn't want to take it either. So that's Durant, pretty straightforward. Moving on, we have Terror, the Mega Aerodactyl. Why is my cursor only... Oh, that's right. Yeah, I do have a little layover here. That's why it's not showing up all the time. Um, yeah, so we have Mega Aerodactyl here. We're running uh, a lot of attack. We're at max attack adamant uh, with uh, an HP of uh, 192 investment. And the speed is just enough for the Mega Latios. One thing about Abe's team that I noticed uh, when building was that he caps out at 110 speed, which is something that I can really capitalize on. And the, the only reason that I made this thing faster than T-Tar is because Scarf T-Tar is a possibility. Uh, but, of course... Uh, Aerodactyl, I don't really feel like staying in on T-Tar regardless of what set it is, so I'm, I'm just going to, to switch out more than likely, which is why I only sped crept the, uh, the Megalodios. 
and uh, we got Thunderfang, Crunch, Roost, and Stealth Rocks. As you can see, I have a lot of Dark and Ghost coverage on this team. Uh, Crunch obviously uh, does a ton to Megalodios, uh, almost knocks it out. If uh, it could knock it out from full, if it's taken Rocks and it's not like really, really bulky. Uh, and then of course, Thunderfang is there because I have the chance to flinch. I have the chance to para with this move, uh, and it's also stronger than Stone Edge on Finny. Uh, and Finny is something that I want weakened for Como specifically. So if I can get Finny down, then Como can can do a ton of work. Uh, once I get on get in on the correct mon, something like uh, Palisand or his Titar, if it's locked into a move, his Snorlax, anything of the sort, I can set up and I can pretty much win from that point on. So that's the the point of Thunderfang. Uh, Roost and Stealth Rocks for the other two moves, uh, so I can just keep this thing healthy throughout the game. Uh, Stealth Rocks. Uh, are going to be really, really nice, especially for uh, if he brings Thundee T, uh, and for getting crucial uh, knockouts on things like Finny and Megalotti with my other mons. So that's uh, that's pretty much terror for you. Uh, moving on, we do have Mad as our last member of the team. Diggersby coming this week. We got a Choice Scarf set with Return, Knock Off, U-Turn, and Quick Attack. Once again, another Dark Move, Knock Off on there. Specifically for one of his best switch-ins being Palisand as it, uh, it's immune to one of my stabs, and it can take the other one pretty well. Uh, it also hits Bronzong, which is uh, immune to one of my stabs and resists the other, so that's going to be really nice. U-Turn is probably the move I'm going to be clicking most often. Quick Attack is a really good late-game cleaning option against his team if I'm able to get everything really, really low. Uh, some of the things that he would want to conserve for the late-game, things like Yan Mega, Hitmonlee, um, even a, a super weakened Feeny, uh, or a weakened Roserade, uh, all do not take quick attack very well from huge power boosted uh, Diggersby, so that's uh, that's the idea behind the team. So we're going to jump right into the battle so you guys can see what happened. Uh, here we go. Um, that's not the right screen. What is... Uh, no, that's not it either. <laughs> Bam! Alright, so we're back in action. Uh, sorry about that. So, as you guys can see, uh, Abe decided to bring the Latios, uh, the Mega Latios, the Hitmonlee, the Snorlax Palisand, and the uh, Yan Mega. So two of the mons that I was sure he was going to bring were Palisand and Megalotti. Uh, the Titar, I was a little bit surprised to see. I'm not going to lie. I'm still readjusting this as I'm speaking. Uh, but I was a little bit surprised to see the uh, the Titar. I'm not going to lie. The Yan Mega was kind of obvious. It does really well against my team as well. Uh, the Snorlax, I did expect. Uh, even though nobody brought it in Mox, I was expecting Lax. Uh, and Hitmonlee, I didn't expect to see Hitmonlee without Finny. I thought Finny would come in place of Titar, uh, but... Lee just came on its own, so I was a little bit perplexed. Anyway, looking at his team, I'm like, okay, well, I can pretty much get off a free U-turn immediately, uh, and I know that his Yan Mega is one of his Zemons, uh, but if his Yan Mega is going to be his lead, then I'm going to click return, and even if he goes into Palisand, that's fine. I'll just I'll work uh, I'll work around it from there there on out. But he doesn't have very good re return switch-ins. Titar can be considered one, uh, but I don't know what the Titar is. So I'm going to just lead with Diggersby, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. As he's going to lead off with his Titar, and I'm just going to go immediately for a U-turn and uh, take off 50% from this thing. So I know it's not bulky, and I'm going to go into my Durant, take a Crunch, and that does a ton of damage. That did 83%, and I was like, all right, you're banded. I calped it. I was like, this this Titar is banded. So what's going to happen now is I'm looking at his team, and I'm like, okay, I can pretty much freely go for an Iron Head and nothing wants to take it, uh, except maybe the Palisand, but if the Palisand comes in, it has to, it's kind of a 50-50 of whether or not I'm going to fire off the Darkinium or not. So I'm just going to go for the Iron Head, as he's going to bring in his Palisand, I'm going to miss thanks to Hustle. Uh, and then on the next turn, Abe, Abe actually decides to stay in, and uh, I go for the Black Hole Eclipse, and his Palisand is dead. Um, now I'll explain my play here. His T-Tar was at 50%. His Hitmonlee is a potential threat for later in the game. Nothing else on his team wants to take a Z Crunch. Like, nothing. His, his Latios would die, his uh, Yan Mega would die, and his uh, Lax would take a million damage uh, from the, uh, the Z Crunch. And if it was carrying a berry, for example, it would pop the berry and I would have that information already. So... Uh, the fact that uh, that he already had a weakened T-Tar pretty much inclined me to clicking uh, the Z-Move early. Uh, so I'm glad I did that because I'm able to knock, knock out the Palisand. And what this means is that unless his T-Tar is banded rocks, he doesn't have rocks up for the rest of the game. So this is going to be really, really nice for my mons as uh, the Palisand's going to go down here. And he's going to bring in his Hitmonlee. And uh, he revenges me with a high jump kick. And I actually EV this thing to be faster than Hitmonlee. Faster than Thundee, in fact. Uh, so this reveals to me that his Hitmonlee is Scarfed which is good because that means that I do not have to worry about a banded set 
um, sorry, not a banded set, a, uh, an unburdened set later in the game. So this is awesome for me. I'm, I'm really, really happy about that. And I, I let my Durant go down, and it's fine. I go into Coco, and I'm going to fire off a wild charge here. As he's going to go into his lax, and uh, I go for a wild charge. It does 48%, and this is actually, uh, you guys are going to find out in a bit, but this is actually an extremely low roll uh, on his Snorlax, considering the amount of defense that he was running. Um, I think the minimum minimum roll is 47, and the max roll is something like 56, I want to say. It's like a 9% variance. Uh, so I got a really, really low roll. Uh, even a mid-roll might have taken him to 50, and that would have been really nice because I would have seen uh, his berry that you guys are going to see right here pop uh, as I go for a U-turn. And uh, I would have been able to either go for another Wild Charge or go for a U-turn into uh, Terror, uh, and his berry would have already been popped. I'm going to get my stealth, ro stealth Rocks here, and he's going to go for a Belly Drum, and he's going to get his Berry, so this is looking very, very threatening. Uh, I'm going to go for a Thunder Fang, attempting to flinch, or to para. It's boosted by the Electric Terrain right now, so it's fine. I'm going to go for a Crunch, and I actually get a uh, uh, a Crit, and um, I, was ho I was playing for the uh, Defense Drop, uh, and I didn't get it, but I did get the Crit, so that's really cool, uh, as he's now going to go for a Return. And he's going to do 97% to me. Uh, I wasn't expecting any less from a Snorlax, but thank God uh, Arrow is not a Frail Mega. Um, and I'm able to, to tank the uh, the attack. So I'm going to go for a Crunch on the following turn. I'm going to bust his Berry uh, again. as he Actually, I force him to go for Recycle, and I'm going to bust his Berry. Now what's going to happen is uh, he's going to go for another Recycle on this turn. I'm actually going to go for a Thunder Fang. This is a, a really important two turns right here. I'm going to go for a Thunder Fang because I saw how much it did a little bit earlier when I went for it. Uh, the first time on his Lax, it did 24, and that was in Electric Terrain. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get his Lax into range where I don't pop his Berry and I can revenge him with something else, i.e. Diggersby or Como. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to Thunder Fang, but I miss. Luckily for me, Ape Clicks recycle though because his Figgy Berry was gone. I go for another Thunder Fang and I get him down to 52 before he knocks me out. So this is perfect. I calc uh, the amount of damage that my uh, Crunch was doing, that my Thunder Fang was doing, and that my Wild Charge and U-Turn did, and I figure out that this Lax uh, has, I, I believe, a little bit more than 160 defense with a bold nature. I could be wrong. It has somewhere around there. And I figure out that my Como has a really, really good chance to knock this thing out. Um, the, I believe the roll is uh, 40... No, sorry, it's 54 to uh, to something. Anyway, the mineral is 54. And I'm hoping that my, my calcs are correct and that uh, he doesn't have more defense than I'm anticipating and I've just been high rolling him. Uh, but I am correct and I end up knocking out the Lax. So down goes the Snorlax, huge, huge threat to me. In comes the Mega on rocks. So uh, I know that, that this thing is going to go for Air Slash. Uh, I don't really have a switch in other than maybe uh, Coco. The problem is I don't know what kind of Mega this is yet. Uh, he also evaded to have even HP, which was quite, quite in uh, interesting. Um, I, d I don't know what kind of Yan Mega this is, and if it ends up being ten Tinted Lens, and I go into Coco, I'm going to die to a Z-move after, and then I have no way to deal with this. So, I'm going to stay in with Como, and I'm going to go for a Poison Jab. As he goes for an Air Slash, he doesn't flinch me. I get off my Poison Jab, and I actually Poison him here. And this is pretty big, because if I didn't get the Poison here... Actually, let me explain. Uh, what I'm going to do on the next turn is I'm going to stay in on his uh, Yan Mega... Um, no, sorry, I'm going to switch out into my Coco. I'm going to switch out to Coco on his Yen Mega, and I'm going to go um, into Coco, and he's actually going to fire off his Z-Move predicting a switch, uh, but I know that he's going to die to poison, and that's why I made this play into Coco. The thing is, had he not gotten poisoned, I saw speed boost. If he doesn't get poisoned, I stay in with Coco, uh, Como, because I can't... Uh, risk my Coco dying because then I have no way to revenge the end mega outside of going into Diggersby and locking myself into quick attack and what that does is that it brings in Titar and Titar coming in on my band on my uh, scarfed locked quick attack is very very bad uh, of course Abe doesn't necessarily know if I'm choice scarfed because all I did was U-turn on the first turn but U-turn typically indicates scarf uh, I'm probably not an agility set, I'm probably not a swords dance set, so he would he might assume Scarf, 
uh, and he might go into his T-Tar. His other option is, of course, to go to him on Lee and fire off uh, a high jump kick, at which point I could go into a Moongus, but then he could predict that and go into either his Latios or his, uh, his T-Tar, and then I would lose him on. So instead, this time, uh, it, because he's poisoned, I'm going to end up going into Coco because I don't care if Coco go goes down now. So he's going to go for a Savage Spin Out. He's actually going to crit me, which ends up mattering. Um, he wouldn't have killed me without the crit. I did calc this. He would not have killed me without that crit, and Coco would have still been alive. But it's fine because he would have just ended up revenging me with something anyway. Uh, either the uh, the Hitmonlee or he would have gone into his Latios and set up the, uh, the Dragon Dance. So now his Yanmega is going to go down. It's down to 3 to 3. He goes into his T-Tar. I play it safe and I go into my Diggers B uh, to be able to get off a fast U-turn. I know that if he goes Hitmonlee, I can always just switch out into my Moongus and I'm going to be fine. So I'm going to go for a U-turn. I'm going to knock out his T-Tar. Bring in my Como. Now, the reason I brought in my Como is for the same reason I brought in Diggers B before. I know that if his Hitmonlee comes in, I can double, uh, I can switch into my uh, Amoongus, and he has to pull a double into his Latios unless he wants to get it slept or parried. Um, or unless he wants to get his Hitmonlee slept or parried. So uh, I go into Como because I know that I can cover the Latios with a Shadow Claw, and that's exactly exactly what I'm going to do. He ends up being DD, which uh, which I called uh, a team preview and uh, as I was building. And uh, right here, as you guys can see, I crit Shadow Claw. Now, a lot of people uh, after the game, a lot of uh, members of the NPL were already saying that that mattered because Latios wouldn't have been in quick attack range from Diggersby uh, after uh, a regular Shadow Claw without the crit. The thing is, Diggersby is not in range of plus one anything from Latios. Any one of the physical moves that it gets, unless it's Outrage, doesn't kill me. So, I would be okay against the Latios. And uh, if he goes for uh, for an Outrage on this turn, then whatever. Uh, he actually ends up revealing Dragon Claw, so he doesn't have Outrage. So, the crit doesn't end up mattering, because he doesn't have a move stronger than Zen Headbutt or, um, or Dragon Claw, which are both the same base power. Uh, and unless he gets a flinch on my Diggersby, which would be Hacks... Uh, I can just U-turn into my Amoongus and clean up the game with uh, with the Amoongus on the uh, on the him on Lee. And I would always U-turn uh, in if I didn't crit because if he roosts, I need off, I need the damage on his Latios to be able to kill him. So uh, that would be my play every every single time would be to uh, U-turn if I didn't get that crit with Shadow Claw. So uh, except now it's going to make it a little bit easier for me. I'm going to go into Diggersby. I'm going to quick attack, knock out the Latios, and I know that his him on Lee is choice scarfed. Uh, I go for a quick attack, it does a, a, a massive amount of damage, 64% with a base 40 move. Uh, he goes for high jump kick, knocks me out, doesn't matter, Amoongus comes in. He saves himself some differential by going for a high jump kick, uh, but uh, Amoongus is going to come in, sludge bomb, knock out the hit on Lee, and we get a 1-0 victory over Aberforth and his... Uh, his Newcastle Umbreon, excuse me. Uh, so that was uh, it was an interesting game. There was a lot of hacks on both sides. Uh, missing the Thunderfang. Uh, I didn't explain that part, but uh, I'll actually back up to that turn real quick. Um, when I missed Thunderfang uh, right here, um, the thing is, even if I hit that, I would have gone for rocks on the following turn because I didn't want to put Snorlax into range uh, of his berry. The, the idea of going for Thunderfang as opposed to Crunch there was to not pop the berry so that I could revenge the Snorlax after, because I knew that Arrow wasn't doing anything else this game. So uh, that didn't really matter, the fact that I missed Thunderfang, because I wouldn't have clicked Thunderfang again anyway. Uh, so if, if that's anybody's argument, then that one's flawed. I feel like the crit on my Coco didn't really matter either. Uh, in fact, it, it might have helped me, because then his Latios would have come in and Dragon Danced. Uh, and, but again, Diggersby didn't die to, to any, any plus one move. Uh, I couldn't know that, though. So, uh, I, what I would probably do is end up doubling into Coco, or trying to catch an Outrage, um, or something of the sort. I, I, I'm not sure what I would have done in that case if he didn't uh, crit me with his Yan Mega. But uh, the point is, we won. Uh, that's a 1-0 victory for your Montreal half -Souls. We're now 2-0 with a plus 5 differential, so it's looking pretty good. Next week, we could take on Greg, and uh, Greg Later 60, and his uh, Los Angeles Clefable. Um, I believe he's 1-1 one one right now. Uh, I'm not sure on his differential, but uh, he's got a pretty scary team with uh, Zardex plus Lando T. He's the one who took Zardex from us. Damn you, Greg. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Yeah, if, uh, if you want to go and check out Abe, his uh, link will be in the description down below. Definitely go and check out his side uh, of the game if you want to find out uh, what his thoughts on the matchup were. I know that he technically brought the wrong team against me. The Titar was supposed to be something else, and I can't remember what it is now. Uh, it might have been Bronzong, but uh, either way, uh, it was a fun game. It was a 1-0. It was very close. Uh, a lot of hacks on both sides. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to wrap it up, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below as always. Subscribe if this is your first time here, if, uh, if you have not already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.